Hey guys, it's Kato here. So I've had to explain stems to a lot of clients lately. And actually, I've had to do it so often that I've made a page on my website so I can just quickly link to the information uh, when I'm talking to a client via email or chat. So I figured, why not share some of that information with you guys today? So let's talk about stems. <laughs> Okay, so what the hell are stems? Well, stems are tracks that we create out of our mix or out of any work in progress, really. And they all start at the same time, the same point in time within our session. So generally, that's going to be the zero point within your session. And that's so that whoever you're sending them to can then easily line those tracks up within their DAW. Now, of course, there are other ways to, to transfer files between uh people you're working with and between DAWs, but today we're gonna to talk about stems, so uh, let's get started. Now, what's included in each track really depends on your mix and your preferences. So we create stems so that we can easily share our work with others. So for example, with my clients, I often ask them to create stems for me at the beginning of the process if they're not working in Pro Tools, right? Because I work in Pro Tools. And that's so that they can easily easily then send me those stems, those files, and what they have so far for their mix. And it's an easy way to send your work to a collaborator. Um, and that's really valuable for collaborators that work in a different DAW than what you're working in. So that's one use for stems, but stems are also useful for remixes and placement in TV and film. So you might notice that, uh, for example, in commercials, a lot of times, and I'm using that example because I used to do post-production for uh, commercials in New York uh, for a little bit, but anyway. So you might notice that in commercials, uh, the hot song of the time that you're hearing on the radio is featured as a background track for, for a commercial, right? And what you'll notice actually is that often some sort of remix has been done on that song. So it's not the exact version that you've been hearing over the radio. It's a different mix that you're hearing, right? And this is so, uh, this is really for practical reasons. So for one, you might not want the lyrics to actually interfere with the advertising message. So the voiceover, or the dialogue within the ad, right? So they often don't include those in that remix, right, for the commercial. And again, that remix is made using stems, right? So commercials and psychology also go hand in hand. So often what they do is they tweak the mix just enough so that you might not get, um, well, you will get the positive emotions associated with the song. We're with that track, but you won't actually consciously recognize the song. And now a lot of us work in audio and we work in music and we might say, oh, well, you know, I would recognize that song. But you realize you got to realize that a lot of people aren't going to and the average person might not. So in summary, stems are essentially used just to transfer files between DAWs. And this is great for collaborations if you're sending something to your mixing engineer or um, any other reason why you'd want to transfer files between DAWs. Um, it can also be handy for remix purposes for TV and film, and it's often used for other remix purposes as well. And um, that's good to keep in mind if you're trying to get your tracks uh, placed, you know, if you're trying to get placement for your tracks, um, because stems are then pretty key. Okay, so that's great, but what are we really making when we create stems? Well, when we create stems, we are creating tracks for an individual instrument or individual group of instruments or individual um, tracks within our session even. And they're all going to start in the same point in time. But how much you break down your session is entirely up to you. And it's, for example, you might want one stem for all your backing vocals. Or you might want to break up your backing vocals into three different stems, right? It kind of depends on the orchestration and your preference and um, your individual mix. So... And it also really, it depends on how confident you are with whether or not those individual um, components of a stem might want to be remixed or not, right? If you think it might want to be remixed, then you're going to uh, break it down even more, right? So 
When I tell clients to make uh, stems for me, what I tell them is that they're gonna ultimately end up, the end result will be a folder full of audio files, and if they used MIDI, then it'll have MIDI files as well. So it's just gonna be a folder full of audio files in the end, so it's really simple end result. All right guys, so I hope that gave you a basic understanding of what stems are and what they're used for. And next time we're gonna go over in more detail how to print stems, so keep an eye out for that video. And for today's question, I want to know uh, what type of tips and tricks do you guys use for transferring data with a collaborator? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, as always, if you like this video, please like my channel, subscribe to my channel, like the video, share the video, and I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday. And thanks for watching. Okay.